Hello friends, what's up? It's Jamie here. Welcome back to another Fangirl Fridays video. So I realized this past summer that I was kind of in an anime watching slump. Like I'm pretty sure that the only anime that I actually watched over this past summer was Boruto when I was watching it with Adam. Uh, but besides that, I really didn't watch like any new anime. And that's very not like me. Like even if I'm not watching like a bunch of anime back to back, like I did that one month last year where I was watching like four or five anime like in the span of two weeks. Um, I'm usually watching a couple different animes at any given time. Anyway, so upon realizing that I hadn't watched any new anime recently, I decided to tackle some of the anime that have been on my watch list since forever over the course of this past semester. And I was able to watch quite a lot of anime. I watched um, Near Automata, which I made a video about. I watched Cowboy Bebop, finally. Um, I watched Tales of Zestiria X. Um, I literally just finished like yesterday, um, or was it two days ago? It was recently, I just finished um, Rock Lee and his Ninja Pals, the Naruto spinoff. But there were two other anime that I watched this past semester that actually have to do with today's video and are the reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place. So if you couldn't tell by today's title, um, today's Fangirl Fridays video is going to be about sports anime. As you guys probably know, if you've been following me for a while now, I am a huge Haikyuu fan. I've made plenty of videos and shorts talking about the anime and showing off my manga collection and showing off the the fun little keyboard stickers that I got for my laptop or showing off the just general Haikyuu stickers that I got for my my laptop and my laptop case. I I love I love Haikyuu. And if you're familiar with Haikyuu then you probably know that I'm actually wearing a Tsukishima inspired hoodie. Um, this is the hoodie that he wears like as a kid, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember because I feel like I think I only saw him wear it in flashbacks. I, I can't remember. I don't think he wears it as a teenager. Um, but anyway, uh, this is actually not my hoodie. This is Adam's hoodie. I borrowed it for this video. This was actually um, a Christmas present that I got for him off of Etsy. I got this for him for Christmas two years ago and is very cute. He also very much likes it because um, Tsukishima is his favorite Haikyuu character. But yeah, so me and Adam are both like huge Haikyuu fans. I was the one who put him onto it. It's just a, one of those great animes that we love to bond over. But yeah, so for a long time, Haikyuu was actually the only sports anime that I had watched. I tried to get into Kuroko's Basketball. I think I watched like the first, I wanna say like, eight or nine episodes of Kuroko's Basketball and I just didn't love it. I just couldn't get into it. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Maybe I need to try again, but I, as of right now, I don't really have any interest in going back to watch it. Um, if you, <laughs> if you love it, maybe you can convince me in the comments that I should go back and watch it and finish it. Um, but I just, I, for some reason, I just didn't jive with it. I, I don't know why. I wanted to love it, but I just didn't. But yeah, so Haikyuu is the only sports anime that I had watched for, a, wait, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> wait, I just remembered that Yuri on Ice is a sports anime. And I have watched Yuri on Ice. And I loved it. I guess... I just, <laughs> I forgot that Yuri on Ice is technically a sports anime because when compared to the other anime I'm going to talk about in this video, it doesn't follow like kind of the traditional sports anime format. So that's why, oh my god, that's so embarrassing of me. I, and I love Yuri, Yuri on Ice too, so that's really embarrassing of me that I forgot that. But yes, I've also, so yes, I, I, I had also watched um, Yuri on Ice before watching these other two anime that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> So this past semester, I ended up watching All Out and Free because these are anime that have both literally been on my watch list for so long and oh my god, I was not disappointed. There's really just something about an underdog high school boys sports team where they learn about the power of friendship and hard work and teamwork that literally gets my ass every single time. <laughs> Except for Kuroko's Basketball. Sorry, again, I just don't know what it was. I think it's just because I didn't really, like, I, I couldn't really, like, um, find myself, like, getting invested in any of the characters. Like, I don't know. I just didn't really care for any of them. Like, they were all just okay. Like, I didn't hate them, but they were just kind of okay to me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I just, 
I didn't care for Kuroko's basketball. So in today's Fangirl Fridays video, I'm going to be gushing to you guys about all of these sports anime that I love. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting with my favorite sports anime, also just my favorite anime of all time, we have Haikyuu. Haikyuu follows the story of Shoyo Hinata, a high school boy who dreams of becoming a great volleyball player despite being quite short. When Hinata starts attending Kurasuno, the high school that his volleyball idol previously attended, he is forced to work together with Tobio Kageyama, a prodigal setter who infamously demolished Hinata's middle school volleyball team. Although Hinata and Kageyama are constantly at odds with each other, they quickly learn Learn that they may be each other's greatest strengths as they both strive to become the best players that they can be. We also follow Hinata and Kageyama's teammates at Kurasuno as well as many of the players on teams at rival schools. And you know, everyone's just trying to win more games, become the best volleyball player that they can be or not. So, some of them don't care as much, but some of them really care. <laughs> Most of them really care. I first came across Haikyuu on Netflix in the early years of the pandemic, and I was drawn to it because I actually loved playing volleyball as a kid. I was only ever good at serving, serving underhand, but I still really enjoyed volleyball a lot as a kid. My brother also loves volleyball. It loves playing volleyball, and unlike me, he was actually very good at it. He was on our high school varsity team when he was in high school and it's actually funny because my brother like me is pretty short I mean he's taller than me but he's like five 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 six I actually don't know how exactly tall he is but he, he's taller than me but he's still pretty pretty short um, for a guy and so for him when he was playing volleyball like that that was also part of the reason why like the premise of Haikyuu like I was really drawn to it because my brother was able to find success find his niche as a volleyball player despite being short and Hinata is able to do the same thing and I just thought that was a really cool connection but I'm gonna be honest at first I wasn't like super into Haikyuu like I liked it I enjoyed the episodes the first couple episodes that I watched but I wasn't like super into it yet like I think I watched like seven or eight episodes and then I like kind of like stepped away from it and like didn't watch it for a couple of weeks but then I came back to it um but yeah like I wasn't I wasn't like super super into it at first like I I enjoyed it but it took me a minute but once once I was hooked I was hooked I was locked in I was like oh my god I I was so <laughs> I became so obsessed it became like <laughs> all I could think about all the time in classic Jamie fashion. I flew through season one and season two so fast and then I found out that there were two other seasons because Netflix only had season one and season two. So like going into Haikyuu, I was like, oh yeah, that's part of honestly why I was like, okay, let me just finish it out because it's only two seasons. It was not two seasons. <laughs> and thank God for that. Thank Honestly, thank God for that. Because I don't know what I would have done if it had only been two seasons. I think I would have combusted. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I did like a free trial on High Dive, which is like a, a kind of like an anime. Also, I don't know if it's only anime, but it has anime. It's like a subscription service. It's like Crunchyroll kind of, but not really. Um, and then I eventually, once I... Um, flew through season three because <laughs> there's only 10 episodes I jumped into watching season four on Crunchyroll and before any of y'all want to come for me yes up until season four I watched Haikyuu in the English dub and I'm not gonna fucking apologize for it the dub is funny as hell like one of my favorite things to do um is go on YouTube and search up dub compilations for Haikyuu because they're so silly and so goofy and there's just so many great moments I love it like what what do you want me to say? I realize that not all English dubs for anime are good. I realize that there are a lot of unfortunate ones, but I feel like there are more good dubs than people realize, and the Haikyuu dub, in my opinion, is one of them. Obviously, I recommend Haikyuu if you couldn't tell <laughs> already, um, though I will say that it isn't actually finished yet. There are two um, movies that are coming out to finish out the anime. One is coming out in February, I think, and then I don't know when the next one is coming out. Um, and like many Haikyuu fans, I am definitely concerned of how they're going to, you know, wrap up the anime because there's there's a lot of the manga still to adapt. And I don't know how they're going to fit that into two movies 
but we'll see what happens, I guess. And it's like, I really want the movies to be good. I hope that they're good. Like, again, just as a Haikyuu fan, like, I really want them to be good. I don't want them to fail, but I'm just nervous about how they're going to how they plan to wrap everything up again in just two movies unless these movies are like really long i, I don't i don't know but if, again at that point then why wouldn't you just make two more seasons i don't know i don't know i don't know what their plan is but hopefully they're good and but if not at least we have the manga <laughs> anyway to round out this section i figured i'd mention some of my haikyuu favorites so my favorite arc of haikyuu is the shira torizawa arc oh my god i love it so much so season three is my absolute favorite Oh my god, that, literally every time I watch that season, I just get all the goosebumps, all the feels, like, oh my gosh, it's so good. Literally all of the Haikyuu manga that I own is, like, that that whole arc. It is the Shiro Torizawa arc in manga form. Oh my god, I love it so much. It's so good. It's literally so fucking good. And my favorite characters in Haikyuu are the Karasuno third year. So Asahi, Daichi, and Suga. They are my babies. I love them. I would die for them. But honestly, I feel that way about the entire Karasuno team. They are, they're all my, they're my babies. I love them. I love them so much. And I also, I, I love honestly, like, the vast majority of Haikyuu characters. Like, there aren't that many characters that I don't love. Um, besides, like, I don't know, like, the fucking coach from <laughs> Shiro Torizawa. <laughs> Alright, next I'm gonna talk about All Out. Similarly to Haikyuu, All Out follows the story of Gion Kenji, a high school student who aspires to be a great rugby player despite the fact that he is very short. Although unlike Haikyuu, where the story's main focus is on Hinata and Kageyama and their relationship, All Out is much more of an ensemble piece. The Jinko High rugby team has a very large cast of characters, and while some of the boys are definitely more minor characters, we get to learn a lot of like the stories and motivations of a good majority of the boys. And that's not even counting the players from the other teams that Jingo faces throughout the series. All Out definitely has a very similar feel to Haikyuu from character types to kind of them both having like these underdog, like very overlooked sports teams um, to also some character voices that they share if you watch the English dub, but it has enough all Out has enough of its own identity that it doesn't feel like super repetitive. Like it still feels new. It's also partly due to the fact that rugby is a very different sport from volleyball. So that definitely helps to set them apart. The one downside that I'm quite sad about is that the All Out anime only has one season with 25 episodes. And so there's a good amount of the manga that has been left unadapted, which is really such a shame because the amount of volumes that were left that were not adapted into the anime, like I really believe that they could have done like a second season and that would have like wrapped everything up. The anime adapted volumes one through 10 and All Out has 17 volumes in total for the manga. Also, another reason why I'm very sad that All Out didn't get a second season is because where they left off in season one, there was a certain conflict going on um, involving my favorite character, Matsuo, that doesn't get resolved by the end of the anime, so I'm basically been left on a cliffhanger, and now I have to go read the manga so that I know what happens to my favorite boy. Which, by the way, I'm not actually mad that I have to read the manga. Like, that's fine. I'm totally down. Um, I just wish that All Out had gotten a full adaptation. Even so, even though it's not complete, I still recommend All Out. It's a great time. It's a good anime. Um, and you can find the manga online. You just have to pay for it. Anyway, to round out this section, here are my favorite favorite all-out characters. Like I just said, my favorite boy is Matsu. That's my guy, man. Oh my god. Oh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> I'm so concerned. I'm so, I'm so concerned about him. Um, yeah, so Matsu is my favorite. Um, then Hachi, and then probably Kamo. Uh, whoa, Kamo. Jesus. Oh my god. I butchered his name. I'm so sorry. He's so cute. He makes the greatest. Oh my god. He has the best facial expressions. I, I've taken so many screenshots of his face because he, he's so silly. But honestly, just like Karasuno with Haikyuu, the whole Jinko team has my heart and I would die for them. <laughs> 
All right, next I'm gonna talk about Free or Free Iwatobi Swim Club. Free is one of those animes for me that not even just as like a sports anime, but just as like an anime in general that has been on my watch list for so long, literally since I started watching anime as a teenager. I have always been meaning to watch it. I had just never gotten around to it for some reason. I don't really have a good reason. I just I just never watched it until this past semester. And I loved it. I literally loved it so much. And unlike the other anime that I've mentioned in this video, Free is actually like a complete adaptation. Literally the whole story has been adapted into the anime between the like the anime seasons and the movies and it's wonderful oh my god it's so good so in free we follow haruka nanase or haru who is a swimming prodigy who isn't interested in competitive swimming in any capacity and simply just wants to swim free or freestyle over the course of the anime and the movies we jump through Haru's life so we start at his high school years then we jump back to his middle school years and then we jump forward to his university years and throughout the anime we get to see Haru's relationship with swimming with competitive swimming be affected by the teammates and the rivals that he swims with namely Rin Matsuoka his childhood rival what I love about Free despite him not being my favorite character even though I do love him Haru is such a different kind of protagonist than Hinata or Gion from Haikyuu and All Out because I feel like having a prodigy character in these types of sports anime is kind of the norm like you know you're gonna get at least one but even so usually these prodigy characters still want to improve they still want to get better and learn new skills but when we first meet Haru he has no interest in competitive swimming he has no interest in becoming the best swimmer in the world or competing on the world stage that's Rin's dream but that's not Haru's dream at least not at first Haru just wants to swim free all he cares about is being in the water so much so that he will literally just like sit in his bathtub like when it's full of water not like bathing in it just like sitting in it <laughs> in his swim trunks or he'll like fucking stripped down in a fucking pet store just so he can dip his toes into a fish tank like he's kind of a weirdo but it's okay we still love him <laughs> but so it's just so incredible to watch Haru's growth it's so satisfying and fulfilling because he really is shaped by the people that he swims with especially Reen and Mako I feel like Free is definitely not as like silly or goofy as Haikyuu and All Out could be at times it's definitely a lot more emotional and heartfelt but I still highly recommend it also my favorite characters from Free in case you were wondering are Mako that's my that's my boy oh my god I love him I love him I love him so much that's my guy um and then Reen after he resolves his issues with Haru um and then Ray oh my god I love Ray <laughs> I love my boys I love my boys oh my god but once again I know I sound like a broken fucking record but I I love everyone in free I love all my boys except for Hiyori he's annoying he gets less annoying over time but he's just kind of meh to me <laughs> but overall generally speaking the free boys have my heart and i would die for them <laughs> this is kind of a bonus section because i as you saw literally did not remember that yuri on ice was a sports anime until i sat down to make this video um so i guess i'm gonna talk about yuri on ice i mean listen i will gladly talk about yuri on ice i i do i do love it so much yuri on ice follows the story of yuri katsuki a japanese figure skater who is inspired to return to the sport after having taken a hiatus when his idol russian figure skating champion victor expresses interest in becoming yuri's personal coach we also follow another russian figure skater yuri oh god plisetsky I hope I said that right, um, who is also very interested in having Victor become his coach and his relationships with Yuri and Victor. But the main focus of the series is the romantic relationship that forms between Yuri 
Japanese Yuri and Victor and it's so sweet it's so cute oh my god it like <laughs> it made me cry so 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 many times that's the thing about Yuri on Ice it's really more of a love story and like all of the ice skating stuff is pretty secondary so that's why I didn't really think of it automatically when I was thinking about the sports anime that I've watched but it's so gay and I love it I know that I, I'm very aware that a lot of people have had mixed opinions about Yuri on Ice due to the fact that the gay relationship between Yuri and Victor is never like officially declared in the anime it's definitely left a lot more ambiguous now this is just my opinion so take it with a grain of salt um, but as I've read more queer literature throughout this year, I've come to realize that a lot of people view sexuality and the queer community through a very westernized lens. And while that's not to say that censorship is good, that's not what I'm saying at all, I just feel like a lot of people, their approach to queerness and the queer community is like, if the way that the queer community exists globally isn't up to, isn't meeting Western standards, then it's illegitimate somehow. Which again, I just wanna make it abundantly clear that that is not to say that we shouldn't be fighting for queer rights globally. We should be fighting for queer rights everywhere. I wanna make that very, very clear. However, I just feel like it's not fair to disregard the experiences of the queer community globally if certain queer people aren't able to express their queerness openly or they choose not to. I fully accept and recognize that I am not by any means the most qualified individual to speak about queer rights in Japan, but from what little I do know about queer rights in Japan, a lot of advancements and wins in queer rights didn't occur until after 2016 in Japan. And Yuri on Ice aired in 2016. All I'm trying to say is that yes, Censorship is bad, but also who's to say that the way that Yuri and Victor's relationship was portrayed in the anime wasn't an accurate reflection of someone, not even just in Japan, but anyone in the world's queer experience. And let's not also invalidate that. Like, I feel like both can be true. But again, this is just my opinion take it with a grain of salt. Anyway, I very much recommend Yuri on Ice. Again, it doesn't follow the classic sports anime format, but the figure skating is just as beautiful as the love story. Well, okay, <laughs> there are some routines that are maybe a little bit more on the sexual side. Um, and so beautiful may, be not, may not be the correct adjective to use, um, but <laughs> for the most part, the figure skating is very beautiful, the, and the love story is also very beautiful. Anyway, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about Yuri on Ice. <laughs> also, I don't really think I have a favorite character from Yuri on Ice. I really love all of them. Like, I love both of the Yuris. I love Victor. So maybe Victor's dog is my favorite. Also, I just tried to look up the dog's gender because I was like, I was saying, I was like, is the dog a boy or is it a girl? Literally no idea. The wiki doesn't even know. It's okay. It, it's just fluffy. It's just a fluffy dog. It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite sports animes are. After I watched All Out, I add like a bunch of different sports anime to my Crunchyroll like watch list or like whatever that function is um so i have a bunch like in my catalog but let me know if there's any specific ones i should watch next though i would like to request that if you're going to recommend a sports anime for me to watch i would like them to be a little bit more on the whole on the wholesome side um because i mean i don't know maybe i'll watch blue lock I, but I, don't, I don't know they seem i don't know what's going on over there they seem a little weird but maybe it's good is it good someone let me know maybe i'll watch it who knows <laughs> Once again, that's all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I upload Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, except when I don't. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.